How you doing? Coach Mike Gathea. Mike Gathea, Rainier Beach, 22 years. So we're just going to start with uh, a little background. Uh, where'd you grow up? Uh, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Seattle. Uh, you know, we migrated out, out here from Washington, D.C., my family. And, uh, but I went to, I went to uh, uh, senior high school, high school out here, Franklin High School. Uh, graduated in 1975. Okay. Uh, what made you come from uh, D.C.? My father was a military uh, guy, and he settled out here. Uh, he got stationed out here uh, when I was young, and, and we stayed out. All right. Um, if you could go to any college in the Washington slash Seattle area, what college would you go to? If I could go to any college, uh, that would be a tough choice, uh, and it all depend on uh, depended on um, what you know what my uh, field of interest was. Uh, Sorry, my, I got some cinder in my eye. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, um, you know, to be honest with you, what I would like to do, uh, what I would do is go to a, uh, a college that, that fit my needs. Uh, and when I say that, uh, I'd like a smaller atmosphere. You know, I, I don't like to go to a, to a classroom where there's two or three hundred people in there. I, you know, I would prefer to go to one that's maybe uh, 30 or 40 or less in there. So it would probably be somewhere like a, a Seattle Pacific University or even a Seattle University. Okay. <clears throat> what is your earliest memory of someone or an event that influenced you to become a coach and do what you do today? Well, one of my earliest influences, uh, uh, like I said, growing up uh, a kid in the 60s and then going to high school in the 70s, uh, one of the biggest influences was Muhammad Ali. Uh, he was this brash, outspoken athlete that uh, did things that other uh, athletes didn't do back then. Uh, very bold, very confident, and uh, you know, he just, um, growing up in the 60s, I mean, he was the uh, athlete that everybody aspired to be like. Uh, the basketball was, in the 60s, was basically on the back burner. Uh, the uh, top sports in the 60s were boxing and baseball, and, and then they looked at football and basketball. So uh, people that we looked up to were people like Muhammad Ali, and uh, you know, there were several baseball players, and, you know, uh, Jackie Robinson had long since uh, retired by then, but guys like Roberto Clemente, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, you know, those are the type of guys we all looked up to back then. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we understand that you, that you kind of have your coaching style like Greg Popovich, uh, which is a legendary NBA coach. Um, what have you like, learned from him to help you become the great coach that you are today? Well, it, it's just his whole demeanor. It's just how he has a, uh, this control over his team. Uh, he's, not a, a, he does, he's not the type of guy that has a huge ego, but he demands his respect uh, in a game where the egos are, are through the ceiling. And he, uh, you know, guys like Hall of, future Hall of Famer, uh, Tim Duncan, you know, um, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, these are all Hall of Fame type guys. And you can just see when he talks to them, who's in charge, uh, they don't call it, make the, you know, they don't call any of the shots, he calls all the shots. Uh, but he also gives respect. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, you get a lot of coaches out there uh, on the pro level, college level, uh, the kids basically run the team. And uh, one thing that Pop is always, he, he knows his stuff. He, he, he's not just an X's and O's guy. He's what they call a Johnny and Joe guy. I mean, he, you know, it's one thing to have this vast knowledge, but it's another thing to be able to relate to your kids and relate, relate to your players and get the most out of them. And I think that's the thing that I like more than anything with Popovich, how he can get the most out of his players. Okay. Um. How long have you uh, lived in Seattle? I've lived in Seattle. I'm uh, 58 years old. Been in Seattle for 50, 50, 55 of those years, 50, 54 of those years. Okay, that's a pretty long time. Pretty long time, <laughs> yes. I have more memories of Seattle than I do uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. What, um, what positive things have you seen in the youth? You know, the one thing that, that, that um, I see in a lot of our youth is, um, is that want 
to become better person, to be, become a better person, to be a, 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 a high character type individual. And, and that's tough growing up in today's society. I mean, with all the peer pressure and, and, and that, that they have to deal with, uh, a lot of them just want someone to care about them. Uh, the one thing, the one positive t thing I see out of them is a lot of them really want to better themselves. Uh, they understand what it means to uh, get a good education. I mean, a lot of a lot of people, you know, they they've been hearing that all their lives, but they don't know the reason why. And what I see in today's kids is really positive. They look at the education as a way out of their situation, however their situation is, uh, and, and they look at it as. Uh, uh, you know, a, a key to open the door to a better life. And so, you know, that want to have that better life is, is the positive things I see in the, the young kids I, I see and deal with today. What was your uh, your journey to become a coach and in, involved in basketball here? I tell you, you know, I tell the story all the time. I was kind of tricked into becoming a basketball coach here. Uh, a good friend of mine who was previous coach, uh, Francis Williams, uh, he was the coach and he had reached out to me and just said, hey Mike, I'm not going to do this too much longer. We were good friends. He said, uh, you want to come and help me out the next couple of years, man? And, you know, because he knew that I wanted nothing to do with coaching. And uh, so I said, well, I'll come and help you out a couple of years and then when you go, I'm going to go. And it was funny. my assistant high school basketball coach was the athletic director at the time, a guy named Robert Johnson. And uh, Francis came to me one night and said, well, coach, man, at the end of the year, I think I'm done, man. I don't want to coach no more. I said, well, cool, at the end of the year, we're done. And the next day, he quit. And they had in the paper that I was an uh, appointed interim coach. So I told the athletic director that, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do this thing throughout, you know, from the, until the end of the year. And then at the end of the year, you need to find somebody else. Well, at the end of the year, he went in the paper and said that I was appointed the head coach and said, you explain it to the papers. And so it was one of those things where I said, well, I'll do it this year, I'll do it this year. And 22 years later, I'm still here. Uh, but one of the things, you know, I, I've, been a, uh, I've been a coach in this area, you know, coaching Little League and everything uh, for a long, long time. My kids all played for me. Uh, a guy named Drew, a lot of people don't realize, Jamal, Jamal Crawford and Philip Heath. Uh, they actually uh, used to go to a lot of my camps and stuff when they were eight, nine years old. Uh, so, you know, it was one of those things where you just wanted to be a positive role model in the community and give back to the kids in the community and stuff. It's one thing to talk it, but it's another thing to do it. And so, you know, I, I, I look at it uh, uh, on a broader spe spectrum than coaching. Uh, I look at it as a way to be a role model and show these young men how to do things the right way and how to be positive with their lives. What do you want for your, uh, your players off the basketball court or when they graduate high school? Well, you know, when, when, when my players graduate and leave here, I want them to be really prepared for the next level, whether it's going to college or going into the workforce. I want them to be high character people. And what I mean by high character people are the people that people want to knock down doors to help instead of slamming doors in their face. And so that's the important thing uh, that I try to get conveyed to a lot of my players uh, when I'm coaching them. It's not just about basketball. It's not just about me coaching them. It's about me building their character so they can be strong, strong role models in the community for the young kids who are coming up behind them. What character traits do you value most in your players? You know what? Hard work. Uh, uh, kids who want to come in and uh, put in the work and uh, don't want anything given to them. Uh, unfortunately, in today's uh, society, a lot of kids have this uh, sense of entitlement. Uh, and the better you are, the, the, the easier they think things are, are supposed to be and think that things are supposed to be given to them. So the one character trait that I, I, I hold above everything is, is a good work ethic. How I measure that is how they approach their schoolwork. I know if they're, if they're getting after it in the classroom, not being a knucklehead, not being a clown, uh, that I'm not going to have that same problem out here. 
there, there's some young men, like I said, you already know what you're going to get out here on the court because you, you, you watch how they approach things and, and how they do things in the classroom. They bring that same thing into here. And so those are the type of, type of uh, young men that I, I basically really, really have to put some extra effort into uh, to try to get them to turn that around uh, because that's not a good trait to have because at some point in time when you're out there in the workforce or going to school, people are not going to tolerate that and they're not going to put up with it and you're not going to be able to uh, get anything you want in life unless you have that good, strong work ethic. Okay. We've got a few more questions here. Mm -hmm. How do you promote leadership in your, uh, your veteran players like your, your senior players? Uh, the one thing I always hear, uh, uh, and, and you're, you're one of my players who's been around me now for three years, it's, it, it's a big thing about leading by example. Uh, you can talk it all you want, but if you, if you can't walk the walk, you shouldn't talk the talk. And the one thing that I, I, I demand out of, of, of my players who are ha having the leadership role is you got to do it by example. You have to be the type that you're the, you're the three to four point student in the classroom. You're showing everybody, you're not just telling them the good grades, you're showing them that you're getting the good grades. You're the guy who's not a, you're, you're a self-starter. Uh, that's the biggest issue a lot of uh, people, uh, young people have today is they have to be prodded. I look for guys who are self-starters, guys that are, are, are self-motivated uh, because they're natural leaders. And so, you know, the, the, those things, when you tie that, being a self-starter, uh, being a high character person, uh, having that good character, uh, those are the things that you look for in a leader uh, because you know that they're going to be an extension of you and they're not going to be somebody that you always have to uh, uh, just, just micromanage or look over. Now, uh, can you recall a time where you or your team faced a huge challenge and had to overcome it? Mm-hmm. Uh, 2012, help me out, Khalil. 2012, anyway, it was uh, the year when uh, you were a freshman, your freshman year when we were on state. Uh, we were down and should have lost to Lakeside. And uh, it looked to, to a lot of people, it looked insurmountable. We were down three to four points with uh, 10 seconds to go. And we found a way to get back in the game and uh, overcome that deficit. And, and those are the type of uh, character builders I always talk about. Uh, those, those build more than, they're more than just a comeback. It's a character builder to, to teach you that you can overcome anything. Uh, you just have to have faith and believe. And, that was your first year here, so that was, that was a good lesson for you. But uh, it taught us how to overcome uh, big obstacles that are in our way. Uh, that there's nothing too big that, that, that you know in front of you that you can't overcome. So that that, that point at the state in the state championship game when we came back and, and ended up winning that, that state championship, uh, I think that's one of the ones that sticks out more than anything in my mind. Okay. And how exactly did you help your team overcome it? By being a positive leader, showing them that I believed that they could do it, that I believed in them, uh, that I thought that they had something in them that they didn't know they had in themselves, and it was up to me to bring it out of them. And they bought into that. When I, could, when I got eye contact with them, I could see it in their eyes that they believed in what I was telling them. And when, uh, when I saw that, I knew right then and there that, you know what, these, these guys are all in, they buy in. They believe in, you know, all the ends. They were, <laughs> they were doing it. I mean, so I knew that we were going to overcome that, and it, and it, and what it did is it gave, to be honest with you, it gave me confidence as a, as a coach that I could bring something out of young men that they have in them that they don't know they have in them. Okay. And this is a, a little bonus question. What's the, the most memorable thing that ever happened in your years of coaching? Uh, and so many. Uh, of course, you know, you, you, you got to think about the very first state championship you ever won. That was great. Uh, just winning three championships in a row, that was great. Uh, but, you know, the thing, from, from a coaching standpoint, uh,
couple things to just say. I mean, this year's team, I mean, I have to rate that up there because we, over, we overcame some great obstacles uh, this year. Uh, but I think one of the funnest things, one of the most memorable things uh, was the year we went to New York. Uh, the year we were ranked high, high in the country. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, it's kind of gratifying to, to have that rock, rock star status and stuff and have everybody, all the community and city, uh, looking up to you. I mean, we made national headline news uh, by taking on the WIA and winning so that we could go back to New York. Uh, that was a year to remember. That was, that, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, that's the end of the interview. Thank you, Coach Mike, for Thank coming. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate your time. Oh, yeah.